Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to explore some extended sequencing techniques using Subharmonicon to control Mavis. So for this example, we're just going to listen to Mavis's voice, and we're not going to listen to any of the voice elements on Subharmonicon, but instead we're going to use all of the sequencing elements in one of the envelopes to control Mavis. So to begin, the first thing that I want to do is set up the patch so that Mavis's ADSR is triggered by sequencer movement on Subharmonicon. To accomplish this, I'm going to patch the trigger output on Subharmonicon to the gate input on Mavis. Now you'll notice that the ADSR on Mavis gets triggered any time the sequencer 1 moves on Subharmonicon. So from here, the next step that I want to accomplish is to have Mavis's pitch be controlled by the sequencer on Subharmonicon. So to accomplish this, I'm going to patch the sequencer 1 output to the 2 input on Mavis's utility mixer. And I'm going to take the 1 plus 2 mix output on Mavis and patch that to the volt per octave input. Now as you can hear, Mavis's pitch is getting controlled by sequencer 1 on subharmonicon. And I can adjust any of these knobs to be able to change the pitch of my sequence. You also might be asking why I didn't just patch sequencer 1 directly into the volt per octave input into the mixer, and we're going to cover that in just a moment. So from here, I want to figure out a way to extend my sequencing so that it's not just a simple four-step sequence. And the way that I'm going to do this is by using sequencer 2's voltages and mixing them with sequencer 1's voltages to achieve a more complex pattern. To do this, I'm going to first assign rhythm 3 to control sequencer 2's movement. You'll notice that having done that, I can hear the rhythm changing, and that's because the rhythm of the two sequencers are moving out of time with each other, but their triggers are getting combined into a single stream, and that's going to give us this rhythmic pattern that we hear being triggered. Next, I'm going to take the sequencer 2 output on subharmonicon, and I'm going to patch it to the 1 input on the mixer. So now, when I turn this one level up, we're going to hear the two voltages getting combined to form a new sequence. So let's hear how that sounds. So you'll notice you can hear a sequence that feels much longer than four steps. And what it is is a combination of two four-step sequences, but because the two sequencers are moving out of time with each other, we're getting unique combinations of the steps as they move. I can also adjust sequencer 2's knobs now to be able to control some of the pitch movement that we have happening on Mavis. So from here, I'm going to play a little bit with how the rhythms move on subharmonicon. And to accomplish this, I'm going to use the sample and hold on Mavis. So to sync the sample and hold to the movement of subharmonicon sequencers, I'm actually going to use the VCA envelope on subharmonicon. And I'm going to patch the VCA EG output to the sample and hold gate input on Mavis. And then I'm going to make sure that my VCA attack and decay are as short as they can go. And that's effectively going to give me a trigger that's similar to my trigger output. So now I have two copies of this rhythm triggering different elements on Mavis. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sample and hold output, which is going to give me pseudo-random movement, and I'm going to patch it to the rhythm 2 input on subharmonica. Now I'm going to assign rhythm 2 in the polyrhythm section to also control sequencer 1 with rhythm 1. So let's hear how that sounds. So now you can hear we have some slightly less predictable rhythmic changes that are happening in our sequencing. And to hear the effect of the sample and hold on this patch movement, what I'm going to do is actually just listen to what it sounds like when Rhythm 2 controls Sequencer 1 alone. So you notice we have this slightly unpredictable slower movement, and if I were to unpatch the sample and hold, we can hear how it would sound without that modulation. So 
So that gives us a steady, predictable movement. And then by patching the sample and hold in, we get less predictable movement. But when we then combine that with a steady rate of rhythm one, controlling sequencer one, we get these nice little surprises where our rhythm changes on us. Now I'm going to hear the effect of adding rhythm three back in with sequencer two. And now we're getting some interesting pattern movement. To add one additional layer here, I'm also going to assign rhythm four to also control sequencer two so that both sequencers have an interesting combination of rhythms controlling their movement. So from here, I want to add a little bit of animation to the sound on Mavis. And one thing that I want to do is have my filter cutoff track the pitch of the sequence. So to accomplish this, I'm going to unpatch the mixer output from the Volt Proctive input on Mavis. And then I'm going to patch it to the mult on the bottom of the panel. I'm going to take the first copy of the mult and I'm going to patch it back to the Volt Proctive input. So now you can hear we have effectively the same patching that we had before. The one difference being that this Molt 2 output will give me a second copy of the Volt Proactive signal that I'm using to control the pitch in this patch. So I'm going to take that second copy and I'm going to patch it to the cutoff input on Mavis. So you'll notice what's happening now is the higher the pitch of the note, the less filtered it is, and the lower the pitch of the note, the more filtered it is. Now, I find this to be a little bit more dramatic of an effect than I want, so to be able to control the depth of that effect, I'm going to unpatch the patching that I made, and I'm going to take the copy of that signal and patch it to the attenuator input on Mavis, and then take the attenuator output and patch it to the cutoff input. Now this attenuator knob will allow me to control the strength of the sequence and its effect on the filter cutoff. I'm also going to incorporate a little bit of my LFO on Mavis via the VCF Mod Mix knob. So by doing that, what I'm doing is taking mostly the ADSR, but a little bit of the LFO and using that to modulate the cutoff of the filter. So from here, I want to add some additional timbral control to the sound. And to accomplish that, I'm going to patch the VCO output on Mavis to the fold input. So now with the fold knob turned all the way down, I get my sawtooth wave from the oscillator. But if I increase the folding, I have additional timbres to explore. I also have just a hint of vibrato happening on my pitch. Get a, a, a little bit of wavering. So now that I have a sequence that I'm quite happy with, I'm going to go into my computer where I have two instances of our plugin set up. I'm using the MF108S Cluster Flux and the MF104S Delay. And I'm going to first engage the MF108S to add a bit of chorus to the sound. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of delay.
So as you can hear, when using Subharmonicon together with Mavis, we're able to control Mavis in some unique ways and explore extended sequencing techniques when using the patch bays together.